10 News begins with breaking news. Hundreds of San Diegans swarming to sunset cliffs to get a glimpse of an ocean phenomenon. The bioluminescent waves shining blue gold during red tide. A crowd packed the cliffs, some wearing masks, others not. It's only recommended right now, required starting Friday. The gathering even more chaotic because of the closed parking lots around the beach. And our 10 News breaking news tracker was there as cars were backed up to the freeway. San Diego police officers were there shutting off roads and trying to keep people moving. We have more breaking news Thursday morning. Del Mar will open its beach for exercise only. Walking, running, swimming, surfing and paddling will be allowed. No stopping or sports activity on the sand. Six foot social distancing will be required on the sand and the ocean and summertime dog rules will be in effect. Del Mar city officials say if too many residents fail to follow the rules, the beaches will be closed again. And this summer may be cut short for California students. Today, Governor Newsom announced he is considering having schools start back up in July. In mid-March, the pandemic forced the state's roughly 6 million students out of their classrooms. They have since been learning virtually from home. But the governor is worried about kids falling behind. We recognize there's been a learning loss because of this disruption. We're concerned about that learning loss even into the summer. Governor Newsom says starting the school year earlier would also make it easier for parents to return to work. Students may be back in the classroom in late July or early August, but there's no firm timeline just yet. And UCSD is expecting the fall semester to look much different. The university says courses will likely be mixed between in-person sessions and online learning. Enrollment may drop as well as the number of students housed on campus. Fewer international students may attend this fall. Construction projects will be put on hold. And the school says the pandemic could eventually cost the campus up to $650 million. Here are the latest numbers. The the county reported 173 new cases today, bringing our total to 3,314. Five new deaths bring that total to 118. And nationwide, the U.S. has had more than a million cases. As states lift restrictions and begin to get back to business, calls continue for widespread testing. Two months into the outbreak, testing is finally ramping up. And as ABC's Romina Puga reports, the president is using the power of his office to keep the food supply flowing. As the number of confirmed coronavirus cases here in the United States tops 1 million, public health experts say the key to reopening the country is testing. Governors pressing the Trump administration for federal help. We want to get our country open and the testing is not going to be a problem at all. The lines for tests in New York City, the epicenter of the outbreak, stretching for blocks. And in an effort to reach one underserved African-American Philadelphia community, 200 cars of people packing a church parking lot. Others coming on foot, there to get a nasal swab test. Dr. Ada Stanford explaining to her team why increased testing is vital to slowing the spread. So we had a police officer, positive, right? protecting and serving, and now going out and he's positive. And despite guidelines on masks, on Tuesday, Vice President Mike Pence making headlines for going maskless to meet with medical staff at the Mayo Clinic, despite the clinic saying they informed his staff it was a policy. I don't have the coronavirus. I, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to be here, to be able to speak to these researchers, these incredible healthcare personnel. And the desperation for food felt by many Americans. In Chicago, Tanya Taylor is one of 800 people picking up boxes of food at Wrigley Field after losing her job at the concession stand there. We used to think it wouldn't happen to us, but now we know we got this rude awakening. And in Pico Rivera, California, where car lines stretch for miles. Now a threat on our food supply. At least 21 plants closed, more than 4,000 workers sick. Millions of pounds of meat will likely go to waste. Monday evening, the president signing an executive order under the Defense Production Act to keep plants open as critical infrastructure. There's plenty of supply. But a glimmer of hope, a promising vaccine candidate moving quickly into clinical trials at Oxford University. 
Six monkeys given the vaccine did not contract COVID-19 when they were exposed to it, while monkeys who were not given the vaccine fell ill. Now over 6,000 volunteers are coming forward for human trials. In Los Angeles, Romina Puga, ABC News. Nearly 50 sailors on a Navy destroyer that just docked in San Diego have tested positive for COVID-19. The USS Kidd is the second U.S. naval ship hit by an outbreak after the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Sky 10 flew over this morning as the Kidd pulled into Naval Base San Diego. While the infected are treated, the other sailors will be isolated off the ship and screened twice a day. We now know the number of COVID-19 cases at the Otay Mesa Detention Center is even higher than previously reported. 10 News has learned there is at least 149 positive cases there, and that includes 42 U.S. Marshals and 84 ICE detainees. According to ICE's website, Otay Mesa has more cases than any of its other detention centers in the country. The ACLU is suing for people to be released. Uh, even though we're competitors, we're all coming together. A group of San Diego caterers came together tonight to feed the people that usually keep their businesses running, their own employees. As our 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo shows us, the idea came as a way to say thank you for all of their hard work. Unlike the restaurant industry, since events have been banned, um, we're really not doing much. The catering industry is completely shut down. No weddings, no social events, no business. Our revenue uh, went basically down to zero. Nothing's really possible right now. To show appreciation for those in the industry, Caterers United, a group of San Diego caterers, decided they would feed their own employees who can't work right now. Say hello to everybody, drop a meal in, and just let them know that we're still around and uh, that we're thinking of them. The food donation happened at the Julep venue. Employees pulled up and meals were placed into the trunks of their cars, a warm meal to be enjoyed at home. When people, uh, whether it's our employers or our guests or anything, show a little kindness, it goes a long way. The catering group includes 12 caterers representing roughly 3,000 employees, including the French Gourmet, the Abbey Catering and Crown Point. Uh, even though we're competitors, we're all coming together. The meals were free, one per person in the car, to show employees they are valued even when they cannot work. Oh, it's great. I mean, every little bit and just the caring is, you know, worth more than the food almost. Laura Acevedo, 10 News. Three more San Diego police officers tested positive for the virus. That makes a total of 10. Seven have recovered and returned to work. Mayor Kevin Faulkner gave that update this afternoon as he displayed the results of San Diego's annual homeless count. Um, so again, a 12% reduction in unsheltered. For sheltered population, we saw a 5% increase. And that's actually good news. It's an encouraging figure because it means those are the folks that you don't see on the street, people in our shelters, our bridge shelters, or our transitional housing. It indicates that we are getting more people connected to services. In all, the results of the count found just over 7,600 people are experiencing homelessness in San Diego. If you do not own a facial covering, you only have a few more days to find or make one. Starting Friday, facial coverings will be required anytime you leave your home. They have to be worn anytime you're within six feet of someone not from your own family. Today, county health experts said new research shows masks are helpful in slowing the spread of coronavirus. Even homemade cloth masks like the one that I'm wearing have now some growing evidence that they may not capture the aerosolized particles, but they are effective in potentially decreasing the transmission of the larger droplets. Today, county leaders also revealed testing capability is increasing. However, we're still not able to test the number of people needed each day to be able to widely reopen businesses and schools. A task force is working to solve that problem.